So finding the best 85 inch television in 2023 can be a bit of a problem, but not to worry. Today in this video, I'll be doing just that. So smack a like on this video if you like stuff like that and subscribe and join the journey and let's dive right in. Now in this video, you can expect me to talk about the best options, but also the countering options that you could go with and maybe why they're not so good. At the top of the list, we have the TCL QM8. The TCL QM8 is nothing short of a champion and the reason for this is because of the black level control excellent brightness and QLED color or quantum dot color. Now, if you're new to all this terminology and jargon, not to worry, that means it's going to be really bright and super colorful with a great nighttime experience. Now, this usually is reserved for more expensive televisions by a lot, especially if you start looking at brands like Sony, Samsung, and LG, where TCL and some other brands are doing what they can to step into the market and really take over the LED space. And so if you don't want the risk of permanent burn-in, this is an option that I think is worth looking at. Motion is one of those things that are really good. So even if you have motion processing off, it'll look good, but if you turn it on, it gets extra slick and really fluid. Now, it is my stance that that is how motion processing is supposed to work, and that is exactly what motion processing is supposed to do. But on this TV, it, that's exactly how it happens and what it does. So again, more of the positives. It comes fully loaded with all the bells and whistles, excellent internal speakers, so if you don't have a soundbar, you really don't have to worry. It's pretty much that TV. Like, as far as TVs go, it's really good. Now, it's not the best TV on the market, but it's damn good for the money, and I think it's something that you should consider. Next, I would consider the Sony X95L. This TV, again, similarly has wonderful brightness, beautiful black levels, and really good color. But that's not why you buy a Sony. You buy a Sony for the upscaling capabilities and the clarity, and both of which are on point with this model, to the point where you really, honestly won't have a lot that you're wanting for if you were considering maybe going OLED or not. The clarity in most cases is gonna be so close that it's really hard to justify OLED. So even though OLED has the advantage with pixel level illumination, it kinda doesn't matter because the TV performs at such a level to where you're pretty much there really as far as the clarity and the sharpness. Now, there is another thing to consider with the Sony though. The Sony does have a little bit of an issue in terms of motion. All the Sonys are like this, no one talks about it, but that's the case. Now, when I say motion issues, when you enable motion processing, which is supposed to smooth out motion, not really as smooth as it should be, which is why we look at something like the TCL. But overall, it does have good features. Now, it does still miss the HDMI 2.1 across all four ports, instead you are limited to two, but it does have enough features to justify it as a purchase, and the picture quality really is something special, to the point where you'll look at it and you'll be like, wow, like this is really a wonderful looking image. And to that end, even though motion is on the bad side of things, where it's not as clean and clear, especially in action movies, you're gonna notice some hiccups, but overall the experience is there, and if you're not really a motion person and it doesn't really bug you that much, then this is definitely something to consider as well. Now, if price is something that is super concerning to you when we look at something like the X95L, trust me, I get it, we then would probably have to take a step down just a little bit to the Sony X93L. Now, that doesn't mean by taking a step down that you're getting like a super crappy display. It just means that you're not gonna have as good of the brightness and the black level control as you would on the most flagship model. But to be fair, it's pretty much the same thing, just, just a hair difference. I mean, really, like features, everything. So you're not really losing a whole lot. So if you had to make the determination between the two, price is obviously going to be the biggest determining factor and how much you really value that extra headroom for brightness and you know the local dimming control a little bit more than you know you would normally but it really shouldn't be that big of a factor considering they are very similar in what they do so if you weren't interested in a sony and you wanted something that could give you awesome colors and great control over colors to really get it exactly the way you want you would look at the hisense uak now the reason this isn't higher on the list are for two reasons the first reason is that number one i have international viewers and there is a lot of talk about hisense just not being where they need to be internationally so that's going to create some problems when i recommend it at the top of the list the other Another issue is that in my time reviewing it, Hisense advertised that they would be a certain level of brightness that they did not hit in my testing or measurements. So I cannot in good conscience recommend something that they didn't even hit. And then in addition to that, their motion processing is no better than what Sony is offering and I feel like for the most part, you probably would just be better off with the Sony because at least you'd get clarity and Hisense is struggling with clarity. Now all of this sounds really negative, but there are some redeeming factors that put it closer to the top of the list. Black levels are still one of those things, and color, I'm not joking, is like 
the creme de la creme. Like you're talking, you can hone it in to a certain level of accuracy that most TVs can't achieve, and the colors are just beautiful because of it. And I think, honestly, outside of maybe LG, it gets really hard to find a TV that can hang really well with Hisense in terms of color quality and getting exactly how colors are supposed to look true to life. Now I say true to life because, of course, if we run equipment and computer software, there are tons of things that could be more technically accurate, but technically accurate does not mean that that display matches the way it would look to a human being that knows what things are supposed to look like. A computer isn't looking for that. So that's why I would say that, but Hisen still has HDMI 2.1 gaming features and the list goes on. Though I will say if you're a PC user, Hisense is not as good as supporting a lot more of the advanced resolutions and things like that, which is why it gets knocked down just a little bit lower. After that, we would have the TCL Q7. The TCL Q7 is an excellent alternative, but it doesn't have the kind of color that the U8K has, hence why it's lower on the list. Now, that doesn't mean that it's a bad TV, of course. It's got beautiful color. It has awesome black levels to the point where, in many cases, I was actually mistaking it for a QM8, so that's really impressive. Motion is super slick and super clean. Speakers, not as great, but honestly speaking, overall, it's a great set. And the brightness is acceptable. It's not going to break your eyeballs or, you know, burn you out of a room in the nighttime. But it is still a good enough experience to where you would want to buy this television. And I think if you're looking for an 85 inch, it's another awesome competitor and decision to make. So let's say like money is obviously a factor and you're very concerned that all of these 85 inches are going for like three grand and two grand. And you're like, listen, nobody's trying to come in at that ballpark. Um, let's lower the price a bit. Well, then you might want to look at something like the Hisense U6K. This is pretty much going to give you everything you need, mini LED, quantum dot color, decent brightness, not fantastic, but the black levels are going to be there, and you're going to have the motion that you're going to need. And in addition to all of that, you still have HDMI 2.1, you have some gaming features that, I mean, really are very similar to what we've been seeing over the last few years on the market. So that's what I would do if you are on a bit of a, more of a budget, but you still want a quality set that's kick-ass that will still impress your friends or whoever is watching a movie at the nighttime with you, that would probably be the next thing I would do. Now, if that really wasn't the level you want to hit at, you're not really caring about nighttime experiences, you're not all that picky, then the Samsung CU8000 is really worth a shot because number one, it's affordable, and number two, it does have solid motion to the point where you're going to be enjoying almost everything you watch on it motion-wise, and color can be dialed in to look really nice, almost to the point of looking like a QLED and fooling you in some instances that it is a QLED. That's how good it can be with the proper setup. This TV is capable, and that's why it makes the final part on this list to where it's like, okay, this is a solid set. I think we should look at it, things like that. But now let's say you've been looking around and you're kind of concerned because I didn't mention some of your favorites, like the Sony X90L. That is not getting a mention. It is very hazy. It is not going to be good in a nighttime environment. And for the price, the options that I've listed ahead of it, again, on this list, in this video, are what I would recommend. Then let's say we want to look at anything else. Like, really, there, there are a bevy of other options. The Sony X77L, um, you know, the TCL, or not TCL, the Samsung Q60 series. I mean, really, honestly speaking, at those price points for those particular models, you're better buying something like a TCL Q7 or you know, a, a TCL QM8. It just makes more sense. So if I didn't mention a specific television, then that almost immediately means for LED, these are the better TVs. Now, obviously, once we talk OLED, the dynamics do change a bit, but the price tends to go up substantially. Then that's also a factor in this whole thing. And let me know what you guys thought and what you would recommend to somebody buying. If you bought something, what'd you buy? Thanks for watching The Number One Brand in Honesty, and until the next video, I'll see you guys later.